Okay. Okay. The mythology of Hachiman, Japan's god of war, is steeped in tales of divine intervention and unwavering protection. Hachiman's origins trace back to the deification of Emperor Ojin, but his legend has grown to encompass the very spirit of Japan. Known as the guardian of the samurai, Hachiman's influence extends far beyond the battlefield. He is the embodiment of resilience and the divine protector of the Japanese people. And today, we are going to learn why he is considered the protector of the Japanese people. In 1274, the powerful Mongol Empire, led by Kublai Khan, turned its eyes towards Japan. The Mongols had already established a reputation as conquerors, and Japan was to be their next prize. The invasion began with a brutal assault on the small island of Tsushima, which was a crucial waypoint between Korea and Japan. The residents of Tsushima suffered greatly as the Mongol forces unleashed their arsenal, massacring the inhabitants and leaving destruction in their wake. From Tsushima, the Mongol fleet, which comprised of both Chinese and Korean ships, advanced towards the northern shore of Kyushu. With their sophisticated tactics and fearsome weaponry, they posed an unprecedented threat to the Japanese defenders. The samurai, the warrior class of Japan, found themselves facing not only a numerical disadvantage, but also the innovative strategies and explosive devices used by the Mongol forces. And despite these daunting challenges, the Japanese samurai fought with unmatched courage and determination. Their combat ethos, deeply rooted in Bushido code, emphasized loyalty, honor, and duty unto death. This resolve became evident as they confronted the Mongol invaders. They engaged in fierce close quarters combat, showcasing their exceptional skills in archery and swordsmanship. The Mongol strategy relied on coordinated attacks with synchronized strikes from infantry, archers, and cavalry. They employed psychological warfare using loud noises and explosive projectiles to disorient and demoralize their opponents. The Japanese, however, adapted quickly to these new methods of warfare. They forfeited their positions and mounted counterattacks whenever possible. And for a time, it seemed the Mongols might overpower the Japanese defenders. But the samurai's indomitable spirit and tactical ingenuity kept them in the fight. Their resistance was not just a physical battle, but a psychological one, sustained by their unwavering belief in divine protection. The Japanese warriors believed that their god, Hachiman, observed their struggle, and would intervene to preserve their homeland. And as the confrontation escalated, the stage was set for an extraordinary turn of events, one that would blend myth and history into a tale of divine intervention. As the fierce battle between the Japanese samurai and the Mongol invaders raged on, the situation seemed dire. The Mongols, with their superior numbers, well-coordinated attacks, and advanced weaponry, were steadily pushing forward. The defenders, driven by sheer courage and a steadfast belief in their divine protectors, fought valiantly but faced overwhelming odds. Then, as if summoned by the prayers and desperate hopes of the Japanese people, nature itself intervened. A sudden and powerful storm began to form over the horizon. The winds picked up speed. The sky darkened with heavy clouds, and the sea became tumultuous with towering waves. This mighty tempest, which would later be known as the Kamikaze, or Divine Wind, swept across the battlefield with unparalleled fury. The Mongol fleet, unprepared for such a ferocious force of nature, was thrown into utter chaos. Ships were battered by the merciless winds, torn apart by the violent waves, and many were smashed against the rugged coastline. The invaders, who had once seemed invincible, found themselves at the mercy of the storm. Panic ensued, and the once imposing fleet began to scatter, retreating in disarray. The Japanese observed this miraculous turn of events with awe and gratitude. They believed it was Hachiman's divine intervention that brought the storm to save their homeland from conquest. The kamikaze did not just decimate the Mongol fleet, it also uplifted the spirits of the Japanese people, reinforcing their faith in the gods. This incredible event became etched in the annals of history as a testament to the power of divine intervention and the resilience of a nation protected by sacred forces. The divine wind was more than just a natural phenomenon. It was a powerful symbol of hope, protection, and the enduring strength of Japan and its warriors. The Mongols were not easily deterred by their earlier defeat, so they returned, and in 1281, Kublai Khan, again, was determined to succeed, so he assembled an even larger invasion force. This time, the fleet consisted of an estimated 4,000 ships, which carried more than 140,000 soldiers, which is huge, even by modern standards. His plan was straightforward, yet daunting, overwhelmed Japan with sheer numbers and military might. 
Learning from their prior experience, the Japanese knew they had to bolster their defenses. The warriors of Kyushu, led by experienced samurai, worked tirelessly to fortify their coastal regions. They constructed walls along Hakata Bay and prepared for the worst. Knowing their very existence was at stake, when the Mongol fleet finally reached the shores of Kyushu, it was a sight to behold, a seemingly endless line of ships stretching to the horizon. The Mongols, confident in their superior numbers and past conquests, launched a series of aggressive attacks. This time, the Japanese stood resolute. The samurai, who were now more familiar with Mongol tactics, fought with calculated precision and fierce bravery. They took advantage of their fortified positions and their intimate knowledge of the terrain. The battles were brutal and unrelenting. Mongol archers rained arrows while the infantry and cavalry sought to break through Japanese lines. Explosive projectiles filled the air, creating chaos and destruction. The Japanese showcased remarkable resilience and unity, driven by an unwavering faith in their divine protectors. As the conflict escalated, the Japanese found themselves locked in a desperate struggle for survival. Yet, unbeknownst to both sides, the very forces of nature were about to tip the scales in favor of the defenders, setting the stage for one of the most astonishing turns of events in military history. As the fierce battles continued on the shores of Kyushu, the Japanese samurai faced the immense might of the Mongol fleet. The skies began to darken, signaling an impending natural phenomenon. And just as the struggle seemed insurmountable, a second, more ferocious typhoon began to form. The winds roared with an intensity that echoed through the mountains and valleys, and the sea churned with violent waves. This powerful storm, another kamikaze, once again swept through the Mongol fleet. Ships were tossed about like mere toys, colliding with each other, capsizing and smashing against the rocky coastline. The Mongol soldiers, many of whom were already weakened from the prolonged conflict, faced chaos and destruction on an unimaginable scale. For the Japanese defenders, this second typhoon was more than just a natural disaster. It was a reaffirmation of their faith in the divine. They believed that Hachiman and the other protective deities had intervened once more, sending this catastrophic storm to safeguard their homeland. The ferocity of the typhoon decimated the invading force, scattering and eliminating a significant portion of the Mongol threat. The Mongols, battered and broken, had no choice but to retreat again. The devastation from the storm was too great to overcome, and with their fleet in ruins, their hopes of conquering Japan were utterly dashed. The second kamikaze solidified the belief in divine intervention, reinforcing the narrative that the gods themselves protected the Japanese islands from foreign conquest. This miraculous victory would echo through the ages, a testament to the power and faith of the enduring spirit of the Japanese people. The kamikaze winds and Hachiman's divine protection left a truly enduring legacy in Japanese culture and history. These extraordinary events of divine intervention strongly reinforced the faith in the gods' protection, shaping not only the identity but also the collective consciousness of Japan as a nation. The tales of those miraculous storms that decimated the Mongol fleet became deeply ingrained in the Japanese psyche, symbolizing both divine favor and national resilience. Hachiman's role went beyond just being a deity. He became a symbol of hope, strength, and unyielding protection. As tales of the kamikaze spread, they bolstered the belief that Japan was a land safeguarded by divine forces. The shrines dedicated to Hachiman, like Usa Jingu and Isuru Geoka Hachimangu, became places not only of worship, but of cultural pilgrimage, where people sought comfort and reassurance in times of turmoil. And to add on to it, obviously centuries later, the term kamikaze would find new life and meaning during World War II, and this time it described the pilots who embarked on near-impossible missions to defend Japan from invasion. Just as the divine winds had saved their homeland centuries ago, these pilots were seen as embodying the same spirit of self-sacrifice and courageous defiance. Their missions, though tragic, were thought to channel the very essence of Hachiman's protective intervention, aiming to safeguard Japan against overwhelming odds once more. While the historical context changed dramatically, the underlying concept of divine protection and sacrifice persevered. The legacy of Hachiman and the kamikaze continued to serve as powerful symbols of resilience, bravery, and the enduring spirit of a nation that holds its sacred connection to the divine close to its heart. All right, that's all I got for today. Thanks for listening. If you like it, hit that subscribe button for us. If you don't like it, that's okay too. Other than that, have a great day.